pretty much boring. You know, you get up there and you go round and round and round, uh, gathering up a formation. You know, you, a lot of planes involved, you know. How long would it take to get in formation? Probably two hours. Where you get gathered the way you wanted them, and then you would take off for your target. Where were the targets? Uh, somewhere in France, mostly in Germany, uh, some in Austria. So this is still when France was occupied. So you're talking about 42, 41, 42, 43? Yeah, 40, 43 and 44. 44 is when most of what was going on because we didn't have enough enough airplanes up there until then. Like when we, um, we ferried a plane over. That's how they got them from the United States to England. Get it, you know, we go one at a time. And the transports? We transport, we went from uh, New England, we went up into Canada, and from Canada we went over... Iceland. We stopped in Iceland. Reykjavik. Hmm? Reykjavik. Reykjavik, yeah. And then we went to Scotland, and... <clears throat> We delivered our plane, went to another base where we picked up our the plane we were going to fly in, and then we flew in that plane the rest of the time. So you spent a night, at least a night in Reykjavik. Well, I think we were a couple nights there, you know. I think we took the same plane over, though, you know, from Reykjavik to Scotland. It's hard to remember that stuff. You remember D-Day? Yeah, everybody was. Did you know? You well, knew they it was, told us, yeah. But this is it. They this didn't know it. it just before. You didn't know it like the night before, did no, you? No, but the, you know the decision it made, and then they passed it on. You know, you, you had a briefing every morning. So this, what was it like that morning? Then it's, this is it, man. This is the big one. That sort of thing. Yeah. What was your first mission that day? What did you do on D-Day? We, we flew mission and then went back home, loaded up and flew another one, and then we flew another one. We went like, that's kind of stupid really, except that they might have been using all their resources. I don't even know where we went on D-Day. You don't know, you dropped bombs. Though. We dropped, yeah, yeah. In formation. That was the reason, yeah, that was the whole thing. We didn't, none of us dropped our bombs except on the guy ahead of us. We would be flying in formation and then this guy dropped his bombs and flares and as soon as we saw that, we dropped ours. So. The navigator and the bombardier were redundant. <laughs> then, you know, all we did is drop on the guy ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So only the guy in front knew the exact target. Yeah, we were not until you became the head of a formation, which we we did until near the end. You know. It would have been nice, I think, to keep notes and stuff like that. Yes. No, no, I don't know anybody that did. So that day of D-Day, you had three missions. Does that count as three missions, or that was one mission? No, I don't really know. You had 35, right? Mm -hmm. And then they retired you after 35. Yeah, and why? Why'd they do that? Because that was the average life of a plane, of a formation, the whole thing. So if you went to 36, you were probably not going right. to make it. You're, yeah, you oh. were supposed to be gone. Is that because be of mechanical, or was that because being fired at? The answer is yes to both. <laughs> yeah, they, when you get that many, it, 
that was the life expectancy of a, uh, started out with 25 missions and then as we became stronger and more planes then there were fewer percentage wise there were fewer knocked down mm -hmm. mm. did you ever get hit always almost always what was it like getting hit well, you get you know, little holes that appear in your airplane. You know, mm -hmm. mostly we got hit by flak. And I don't know, I think altogether we had either two or three times of when our particular formation was attacked by German airplanes. Did you have an escort? A fighter escort? <clears throat> Going in and coming out. But not over target or anything. We were all on our own. And that's when we would go, you know, squeeze in real tight. <clears throat> you know. So when you drop your bomb, the, the guy up front dropped his bomb, and everybody who was watching that airplane would immediately drop their bombs. Oh, they cluster. Why? The idea? To get, yeah, to get them bombs dropping here and here and here and here. Because they were not very accurate at all. The bomb sites were very good. And you had gunners on your planes. I had two. I had two up here. You know, at the sides, they were on a big hook with it, and they that was to counteract the um, wind force. You know, here. The, <coughs> On the gun, if you didn't have it there, the wind would just, you know, you know, the speed would just push the gun this way. So you had it hooked, and then you'd grab both guns when the airplane's coming, so you knew which one to grab. If you saw the plane coming to the left, you would hang this one up. And Did you ever fire the gun? Yeah. Did I ever hit anything? I don't know. <laughs> your, your plane was not pressurized, right? No, there was no pressure in there. No, so you, and those you, big bombers. Did you have a, a way to deal with the cold and the lack of oxygen? Yeah, we had uh, electric suits. Um, when we first went over, they were big fur lined, uh, fur lined suits. But from there on, they, they were. So what would happen if the electricity went out? Did that you had to happen? go down or you'd die. You had to go down. Yeah. How cold was it up there? Huh? How cold was it? Um, the coldest ever, uh, which I have said a number of times, the coldest I ever, uh, I had to keep track of that, had to do with airspeed and stuff like that. Coldest ever was 92 below. Wow. And that was, you know, you couldn't use your relief tube because it, as soon as you started to pee, it would just back up in your... So what would you do? Huh? What, what did you do? You'd pee into your helmet. Yeah, we, we had this metal helmet. And <clears throat> pee in that, and then in a matter of a few seconds, take the helmet, turn it over, and hit it on the ground and go over and shove it out the uh, the entrance thing where you grabbed and pulled your step under the air. So you bombed the Germans with your pee. <laughs> we peed on them. Yeah. Wasn't that cold to pee like that? I mean, what, that, you, where, no, what else are you going to do? You got, you're you're going to freeze your little... No, you're an electric suit. You just hold the thing here and pee into okay. it. You're way up high. You know, you're... Everything's hyped up. You're on a lot of oxygen. You had an oxygen mask. Yeah, you had to have them or you had to go down. You'd die up there if you didn't. And you, how high were you? We, somewhere around 32, 33,000. Just like a commercial flight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they could hit that high? They could shoot up that high with the flak? With the flak, yeah. They'd go up over 40,000 feet. And that's where the danger was. They didn't have enough airplanes, you know, to do anything. Because, you know, you see them shot down. I, I saw some planes of ours that shot down. You know, I knew who 
Who was in them? Hmm. The parachutes. Did you have a parachute? Everyone had them. Yeah, mine. I, I had a. Uh, I'm going to call you back for later. I'll, I'll call you back. Did you have a parachute? Did you ever try it? Yeah, it was in a little pack, a chest thing. But what I did, it was in your way, so I put it on the floor and I had a strap. And I took the strap onto me and onto the parachute. And if I had to get out of the airplane, I'd jump out and on the way down, I'd put the Hello. chute on. Did you ever have to jump? During training? Never. I never you jumped. Never, you never jumped? No. So how did you know it, how to do it? Well, they just told you how to do it? And you yeah. Get up there. You think they would have trained you once? At least. No. Uh -uh. Yeah, these well, are the stories you've got to get down. Get them down right now. We had a thing where my pilot volunteered me and him to a mission. This became well known. There was a because uh, there was a guy by the name of Joe Kennedy was doing the same thing that we were going to do. Which Joe Kennedy? Well, uh, Kennedy, brother of Jack. The brother, the <laughs> older brother, the smart one. Joe Kennedy. He was, anyway, he was the chosen was, one, right? Huh? He was the one that was killed. Yeah. And what was the mission then? Well, the mission was uh, the pilot and I would get in this plane. It was loaded with bombs. And this is when the Germans were firing uh, weapons over, you know, they, I forget what they're called now. They shoot them over and they... V2s. Boom, yeah. Oh, the buzz bombs. Buzz bombs, yeah. And what the, they, they had no defense against it. And what they were going to do is they are going to load up this plane with with uh, bombs, and we're, the pilot and the navigator would take off and fly to a certain place, and a mothership would come over above it, and we're going this way, and he would take control of the of the plane that we were on, and we would jump out. Like over over friendly territory. Over friendly territory, we would jump out, and he would. The other guy would control that plane and fly it into where they stored. They, Americans knew where they were storing all these bombs underground. And that was the thing. And then Joe Kennedy died in that thing and they canceled the whole thing after that. Hmm. And he was doing the same thing. Did he do it? Yeah, he was going to do what we did, but he somehow they, he got killed and he canceled the whole thing. Because he was Joe Kennedy? I don't know. So you actually tried it? No, we never we never got up. We were told you were a volunteer. We didn't, we didn't do it though. Yeah. Afterwards you started thinking about it, you know, I'm kind of glad. Tell them about the thunderclap. Thunderclap. The time you flew into the thundercloud. Oh, that was in America. The uh Oh, let's see. Well, we had lectures, and this pilot we had, he was a, a hillbilly type guy from Arkansas. And he was told about the fact, you know, about these uh, clouds. If you went into them, they could throw you way up in the air, you'd go right to the top of that cloud. It might send you up into the 30s and when you didn't have the equipment, you know, you didn't work to equip to handle that kind of altitude. So he wanted to, he had trouble believing that. And so we went and he saw one of those thunderclouds <clears throat> and we went in and all of a sudden our plane was level and everything. But it kept going straight up in the air like this. And it went up to the top of that thing, and all of a sudden, yeah, we're going down. So we went up into the 30s, 
And we didn't, you know, everybody's holding their oxygen, man. And then we came down, we went to about 1,500 feet. We couldn't get out of there. So that's how we learned what to do with a thunderclap. That could have been it. Oh, yeah, they could have slammed you right to the ground. Yeah. I, you know, you'd think you'd be able to fly out of it, but you couldn't. That was a long time ago. It's wonderful that you remember those experiences. Well, there's so much going on. You remember just this happened over several years, and all I'm saying is uh, uh, three minutes worth. You know, uh, you know, remember all the things that went on. The one where Dougie was talking about was we couldn't keep up with our formation, so. We decided the the officers were the ones making the decision. We had an argument what to do. Well, let's get rid of these bombs. But you couldn't out. land with the bombs, right? Huh? You couldn't land with the bombs. No, they'd tear the wings right off the plane if you'd land. They'd keep going down, you'd tear the wings off. But uh, there's a big argument what to do. Let's get rid of these bombs and get the hell out. And I'm the voice that says, well, I didn't come here to you know, to save any lives. I want to kill as many Germans as I can. That's where Mom and I she took issue with it. I could see that. Well, I hated the Germans. So what did I was you do? the only one on the plane that did. And I'm sure it's because I'm sure. So what did you do? We bombed this little village. <clears throat> you know, the pilot, you know, took a sight on it and we dropped their boat. We didn't know what happened. It had nothing to do with the war. It was just a little village. Did you get any flack from the commanding officer? No, we we're on our own. Did you, you know, report the, that? The formation was off somewhere. We did couldn't, you, did you we have couldn't to keep up. Huh? Did you have to report that? or What we did? Yeah. Did you get any flack from the... Uh... <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> no, I, I don't remember. I don't remember what happened after that. I don't even remember when we... Which our, our number of missions, 35, it, all of a sudden it's over, we went home. Were you happy? Well, what I started looking, uh, started doing is looking for a, a way to stay out of, uh, out of enemy territory. You know, I was afraid we'd come back and they sent us on to we were winning the war in <clears throat> in Europe. I was afraid that they might send us to the to other. Japan. Yeah. I didn't want to go because we are already told that the reason you're only flying this many missions is that's the average life of a crew. It's 35, so. You're pushing your luck. They're pushing your luck. Yeah, exactly. So you went to pilot school. Yeah, pilot I went to instructor school and then they shifted me to pilot school and uh, I went to the, the first group I went to, um, what the hell was the name of that plane, it was Stearman's. We did that and there were three, three phases, you know, the first one, then the middle one and then the final one and then the war was over, and they would come to the people that, depending on the program we were in, they came and say, came to us and said, well, you're going to have to sign up, though, for another three or four years, and uh, you'll go to West Point and finish your training that way, and then you'll stay in the service. They don't want that. So they gave you a choice? Sort of. You don't know what they... But you could get out or not? Yeah. 
Was that thing?